Hello, I'm Winters and welcome to the channel. This is the uh, follow-up video to the question and answer video that I posted last week when I asked the community, I asked you guys if there's any burning questions that you'd like to ask me. Why am I doing this? Well, I'm doing this because um, I like watching these videos. They're um, good on mini wargaming. I like picking up my brush, listening to Matt uh, chat away in the background. Matt does them particularly well, I think. Um, and they're a nice little filler while you're painting your army. So sit down, pick up your cup of tea, pick up your paintbrush, and um, get painting. Mm. Tea, lovely. Also, another thing is the personalities behind the videos. I like Matt from Mini Wargaming. Um, I like Dave, I like Lawrence, and um, uh, the banter that goes on in the backgrounds in a lot of these videos that you see. And the geeks are particularly good at it, and Harry swearing his ass off in the dark after that, and things like that. The personality behind the videos is, is, is interesting. It's one of the reasons why we watch, I think, and it's difficult to convey who I am through the kind of narrative-driven videos that I do. So I thought as well, a video like this with me just spieling to you guys would uh, help impart um, some of who I am um, for better or for worse, probably for worse. So I've got the PC down here and start scrolling and just answer some of these uh, questions. So, Tad Coda, have you watched any of Peter Crawford's stuff? It makes my day whenever you upload a vid. Thank you very much. Peter Crawford, for those who don't know Peter Crawford, Google Peter, not Google, YouTube Peter Crawford. He does stop motion 40K, excuse me, videos and they are very, very good. Probably the hardest 40K working content creator out there. He does some very, very good videos that are uh, just the time that he takes in doing these videos. And he hasn't got very many subscribers at all, not very many watches, it's very niche. Um, don't just watch it the first time, watch it twice. <coughs> it's a grower and uh, they're very good. Peter Crawford, check them out. Stop motion YouTube videos. Just awesome work, awesome work. Uh, so many questions, says Jink, someone, Jink, J-H-N-L-G, so many questions which to ask. My most recurring question has to be, who is Sol Garrow? And this was the uh, joint top thumbed up question. It's about a thousand uh, views on this video so far. Um, joint top thumbed up question in all the videos, spieling down here, who is Sol Garrow? Yeah. So I've done two showcase videos. Um, so far, and I'm very, very pleased to showcase story time videos so far. Very, very pleased about the feedback that I got and the questions that I got and the response it got from the community. You guys obviously like them. One on the Pennington Forge, one on the 13th, and I'm still getting questions um, about the backstory, about the um, about the, the names and the characters behind my armies. There is a third one coming. Um, when the Penitent Forge met the 13th, and how they became such close allies and this video will be i haven't made it yet i'm writing it and this video will be out um just this side of christmas or the other side of christmas towards the end of this year or next year i need to fit it in the schedule somewhere but uh, i've got so many questions around sol gara matthias and what's happening i'm just overwhelmed by the support that the legion is getting that the penitent forge are getting that my little creations the things that are the names and the characters and the plots and the stories that are bubbling away in my little brain. You guys are very interested in hearing them. I'm overwhelmed by the um, uh, response that they're getting. So I want to give you more. So this part three will be coming. So now you know the genesis of the Pentant Forge, you know the genesis of the 13th. And you get to see um, why they fight with each other and why they fight together. And I will in there talk about Sol. Garrow and his origin story. He wasn't a nice guy to start off with. Oh no. Okay. Bit windy. More tea. Salmut 2202. S uh, joint top thumbed up. Question. What Xenos factions tickle your fancy and would you consider starting that army in the uh, future? <clears throat> I like um, orcs very much. Who doesn't like orcs? I very much like the idea of a big squad of boys, five trucks, six trucks, seven trucks, going, huh, um, and asking your opponent to deal with that. Uh, no of those big walkers, just trucks. 
and lots of killer cans wobbling along the battlefield, um, swamping uh, your army, a veritable green tide of, of um, walkers and trucks and knobs, mega knobs as well, very interested. I, they, orcs are fun to play, who wouldn't want to play an army for the football hooligans? I would like to play an army for the football hooligans. Would I consider starting that army in the future? Yes. It's all about time, and I don't have any more time. That just, that's it. In between playing battles and editing videos and uh, painting um, and assembling Space Marines, 30k Admech, 40k Admech, my Legion Army, um, some Grey Knights, some of the uh, Imperial Guard that I've got, and the scenery and all the other bits that go on behind the scenes, and I've got to work and pay homage to the wife. I just don't have any more time to uh, start another army. There, There is no more time. Um, all I can do at the moment is continue to put out the kind of content that I'm doing. Um, maybe in the future, if I uh, find a pre-painted orc army on eBay, I managed to get my hands on it. Um, if I can get hold of a, a of a pre-painted army, boom, then I can start filming and playing with that army straight away. Uh, that's the only way I'd end up uh, sticking in a Xenos army on the channel, I think. Uh, what's the backstory of brother Matthias and how old is he? Ask Brandon Braden Smith. As I, I defer the honourable gentleman to the reply I gave some moments ago. The uh, video that I'm going to put up in a couple of months' time, six weeks' time or so, about Pendleton Forge and the 13th will uh, reveal Matthias' backstory. I could start rambling on about Sol Garrow and Matthias and a few others and Snow and others now, um, but this stream of consciousness thing and me rambling is not a good, is not a good compliment. Com uh, combination. I'll keep going off on tangents right, left and all over the place and not do the story justice. I'm not able to give it the uh, true narrative and oomph uh, uh, and, and the grandiose that it needs. So I'd like to tell you, but I shan't. Um, Aunt Wagner, one of my faves. Two, uh, who were your original influences when it came to making YouTube battle reports, i.e. who inspired you to get into the racket in the first place? I used to watch battle reports much more than I do now before I had my channel and I first started watching them when Mini Wargaming was just Dave filming battle reports and Elder Corsair was putting a lot of battle reports. That was a bit some some time after. Um Bella Lost Souls back in number 1780 I think I started watching when they were churning them out. They don't really churn them out anymore. Um, and then a number of years, a number, a number of years after watching Battle Reports. Battle Reports helped scratch that itch, that 40k itch, as well as playing the game and playing some of the video games and reading, I'm looking at the novels, reading all the novels. Um, I still needed to scratch even more of an itch. So I started watching Battle Reports. Um, and the those were the biggest ones out there. Um, who, those, so those were my influences. They, they inspired me to get into the racket in the first place because they were doing them. Um, but what truly inspired me was uh, Striking Scorpion and Mini Wargaming were pretty much... There may have been some other really good, high quality, production quality battle reports out there. But two, three years ago, most of the battle reports, apart from Striking Scorpion and Mini Wargaming and the odd one here or there, there was much less battle reports out there and people used unpainted minis and just shoved the camera and said right this did this and this did this and this did this and this did this and Mini Wargaming was one of the only channels that explained what they were doing Striking Scorpion was one of the only channels that drove a narrative and there wasn't enough good battle reports on YouTube and to scratch my itch so I thought sod it let's start making battle reports myself let's start putting battle reports on the channel turn to my friends and said, Let, let's do this, we've got nice terrain, we've got a, 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 a fair spread of armies between us, we can start making battle reports and shove it up on YouTube, and I'm sure people will be interested, I'm sure I could make them to a, a good standard. Um, 
and that's what happened. And I encouraged my friends to make their own ones as well and, and join me in the pro and join me in the in the fun. And none of them did. <laughs> it was just all of them are still happy to play me, and I still play all of them. And uh, yeah, that's what started battle reports in general inspired me, and putting up good ones inspired me. Who inspires you now? I don't watch very many battle reports now. I watch, I would like to say, anywhere between one and three or four a week battle reports. Um, and that's pretty much it because of time. I don't have much time. I might get to watch a little one in the evening. Um, I might get to watch one in the car at work on my lunch break, skip through one. And that's about all the time I can find. I will make time to to watch almost all of Tabletop Tactics ones, almost all of Geeks and almost all of the Dark Artisans, because I consider them all friends. And uh, we... They're friends. Uh, I like to see those channels evolve. It's very interesting to see how Tabletop Tactics has evolved from um, Lawrence and his mates playing it on his... Uh, kitchen table in the kitchen on that realm of battle plastic battle board with similar terrain again and again from that with lighting that wasn't great <laughs> to where he is now making uh, uh, beautiful narrative campaigns with various different scenery with various different armies and watching that army just watching the channel just go from here to here and uh, it, it's just the evolution of, of YouTube and the end of the evolution of these channels and watching them improve is very, very interesting. And Geeks and Harry from the Dark Artisan, from where he started to where he is now. Um, now full dice rolling, now explaining what he's doing. I mean, Darry owns, I think, probably every army. <laughs> he's also the fastest painter in the West. So they're all painted and he knows his rules. So listening to him explain what he's doing and why he's doing it and when he goes left and when he goes right. The other thing you'll notice when you watch Harry's battle reports, the Dark Artisan's battle reports, is just how disappointed he gets when it starts going south. You can tell he puts his whole heart into it, his whole soul into it. He's so invested in his little toy soldiers running around on the table. And I, I, I've seen it in my own battle reports as well when I watch back and I'm editing it and I can hear my hear my enthusiasm at the start of the game and then something hor horrible happens and this pace at which I'm talking at, at now and the narration that's happening on the table suddenly it slows down to this uh, I guess we must all do it uh, because we are invested in this hobby we, we don't just make battle reports we, we, we you guys we, we, we play 40k, we paint 40k we enjoy this hobby where the hell am I? Uh, who inspires you now? I'm inspired by the evolution of YouTube battle reports and YouTube channels and where they were to where they're going and hope that Winter's SEO channel continues to grow and evolve as well. <laughs> that I don't become stagnant that my battle reports continue to um, get better. It's challenging filming and editing and it's it's challenging thinking, playing a game and trying to narrate an interesting game while you're playing it and uh, uh, not screw up too much when you're trying to say what and how and who, why you're doing this and why this unit does this and put some narration in it but at the same time there's an opponent there listening to you thinking ah and then they can see the trap. It's, it's, it's difficult sometimes. Uh, what are they doing that inspires you and gets you cranked up the same way your work gets the rest of us cranked up? Well, thank you, Art Wagner. It's nice to know that it gets you cranked up. What are they doing that inspires you and gets you cranked up? Um, I like nice armies. I like nice terrain. I like nice stories. I like a bit of banter. What are they doing that inspires me? Uh, just watching them evolve and hoping that I evolve too and hoping that I continue to improve too and not get too bogged down by thinking while I am filming, just film. Um, is that enough of an answer? I'm not sure. 
Cavalier AVA. Hey Winters, hey. Thanks for all the videos as always. No problem. <laughs> My question is, do you, do you plan on expanding your collection to any non-Imperial factions? I don't currently plan on involving in expanding my collection to non-imperial factions. I would very much like to get orcs and post lots of orc videos on the channel because orcs are very popular and I want to play with orcs. I want to have an army of football hooligans. Oh, and I've got my legion coming. 30k legion is coming. People keep asking me what legion am I, am I bringing in? It's going to be Sons of Horus. And it's Sons of Horus because, not because I like Chaos. Um, and it's Sons of Horus because it's the Horus heresy. And I'm a narrative driven battle report YouTube maker and I've read every single Horus heresy book. And The Beast Arises and everything written by Dan Abner and mostly Gav Thorpe and I'm a fluff junkie. And I was thinking for a long time about um, not just having my Mechanicum Tagmata 30k Tagmata, but also having a 30k Legion. And I was bouncing back and forward between five, six, seven different uh, 30k Legions, and I couldn't make up my mind. And the, but the more I thought about it, the more I went down the plug hole, the more I realised that all the stories continue to circle around and are about Horus. It is the Horus heresy. And as I'm a narrative story driven person, and as the YouTube channel is narrative and story driven, I, it, it had to be the Sons of Horus, not because I agree with them and not because I want the Emperor to fall. I, I love and worship the Emperor of Man. I believe in the Imperial Truth, the 13th believe in the Imperial Truth. Um, I don't want chaos to win, I just want to tell a good story. So it was the Sons of Horus and I believe that I'd be able to tell some epic stories uh, using that army. And also, another reason for getting them was, some of the other armies come with strings attached in the sense of how they play. Yes, the Sons of Horus are supposed to be a very drop pod, dread claw type army, but you don't necessarily have to play them that way and you're not punished if you don't play them that way. Whereas uh, the Iron Warriors, um, very artillery heavy and most of their buffs lean that way. Um, Death Guard, <coughs> play a certain way. Some of the later ones that came after Betrayal and Isthmian 5 play a specific way. Uh, but the Sons of Horus, Ultramarines, some of the some of the more classical legions don't penalise you one way or the other. You can just play them how you want to. You can uh, adopt whatever style play, uh, suits your playstyle. So I picked them and I've gone way off topic. Uh, do you plan on expanding your collection to any non-imperial factions? Yes, Sons of Horus, though te technically they are imperial because you could do it pre Istan 5 and use Garvey or Loken and play them as the Sons of Horus before they turned against the Emperor. <laughs> Which I'm looking forward to doing more. I'd very much like to play a Sons of Horus army just before Istan 5. <laughs> led by Carver Logan all the time. Uh, also, is Sol Garrow the overall leader of the 13th? No. Um, I know you'd have a chapter master, so I was wondered about that. Anyway, thanks again. Thank you. Sol Garrow is just one of uh, a number of captains that I have. Um, he's my fave because he was a bad boy turned good. Um, charismatic, uh, lead from the front kind of guy. Um, <clears throat> he's, yeah, Sol Garrow. He's not the overall commander. Jan Green, what is your least liked 40k army and why? And what is your what 30k legion is your least liked? I'll answer the second bit first. 30k legion least liked. None of them. Um, I like all of them. I could easily <coughs> excuse me, have all 18 uh, 30k legions and play all of them with pride. The story, the narrative, the um, world of uh, the Horus heresy is so rich. And so interesting, like Khan the Betrayer in that book, Betrayer. Um, it's just, and he's not a bad guy then. He's still a, he, Khan the Betrayer was perhaps one of the last good guys in the World Eaters army. Um, Anuir Deal and Kalth, the Red Marked, just 
It's got character after character after character, army after army. The Night Haunter, who doesn't like Batman, Curse. I don't have a least favourite 30k army. They are all lovely, lovely things. But what's your least liked 40k army and why? Least liked 40k army. Um, immediately spring at the back of my mind is the Eldar question, but I don't not like them. I just think they're undercosted. I don't mind Wraith Knights being able to do what they do, I just think that they should cost about 500 points more. I don't mind warp spiders jumping around all over the place when you shoot at them. I don't mind the fact that their pilots are the best pilots in the Imperium. They should be. I don't mind the fact that uh, uh, these sides are as dirty as these sides. A blade storm is a, is a great mechanic. It would be better if they'd have said it was AP3 rather than AP2 because AP2 is a bit of a game breaker. AP3 would have been a bit better, but there's ways around it. It just don't wear armor. Um, or Jink. Um, what else was I going to say about Eldar? There's uh, Battle Focus is a great mechanic. Shoot and move or move and shoot. These are all very great mechanics. It's just um, an under-costed book. Um, so if it was costed better and 2,000 points worth of Eldar was equivalent-ish, it's never going to, you're never going to get full balance. There's never been full balance in 40k. Um, and they never probably will. Uh, Codex Creep is a thing. But I've been doing this for a long time and Eldar was the a, a book that was so far out of whack with all the other books, it's just not funny. The whole book needs a 25% tax. And you bring 2,000 points of Eldar and someone else brings 2,000 points of Imperial Guard and they have a competitive game. There's an element of list building in it as well. You just can't bring a crap list. You need to bring a good list that has some anti-tank, that has some anti-inventory and some mobility in it at 2,000 points and they do the same thing and you should have a, a relatively matched game. But at the moment, you can bring anything you want from the Eldar Codex versus a really tuned other list and it could be a bad day for the other guy. So at least like 30, 40k army to play against would be Eldar. Tau, you see, to play against are tough as nails but they have some weaknesses. You need to get there as quickly as possible and use psychers and you can you can hurt town. Necrons are really really resilient, but they don't have much anti psyche defense, and so there's weaknesses against Necrons. But the Eldar don't have very many weaknesses, and nor should they. But the cost should be equivalent. Also, it's all their fault when we talk about fluff reasons. You know, <laughs> the the Eye of Terror, she who thirsts, um, the uh, death of the Eldar and the rise of the warp storms which destroyed the dark age of technology uh, the before the imperium before the emperor um, before the galaxy was ruined when the eye of terror went Poof! that was the elder they did so much happy things that they gave birth to a god of excess which ruined everybody's day and prior to that uh, during the old war, the first war in heaven, they punctured in and out and in and out of reality to the warp and back again, fighting the Necron tier during the first war of he heaven, that basically um, the fabric of reality became like Swiss cheese, it became like a cloth with so many holes and burns and, and it, reality and the warp essentially overlapped and then the devourer plague happened. And all these entities came spilling out of the warp and killed everything except for the Necron Tear because they were already dead. And then they went into their tomb worlds and hibernated for 60 million years. They killed everything, including the dinosaurs, poor dinosaurs, walking around on terror at that time, eating nuts um, or other dinosaurs if they were carnivores. And then the Devourer Plague wiped everything out. It's all their fault. Mind you, the two big wars are all their fault. You could say it was the old one's fault, couldn't you? Because the old ones were fighting the Necron Tear in their first war in heaven, and the old ones um, made biological weapons to take on the Necron Tears. They made the green-skinned Cork, the Harud, the Jokoro, the Eldar, and other species um, bioweapons in, in a very aliens kind of way, Promethean kind of way. Prometheus, what's that new film, Prometheus? Ridley Scott one. They made these dudes to fight the Necron tier and lost. 
<laughs> but in doing so, buggered up the, uh, the space con time continuum so much that it that uh, reality ate itself. So it's not really the Eldar's fault, it's the old one's fault. And I'm glad they're all dead. Um, so that answers your questions, <laughs> hopefully. Art Wagner, second question. What does SEO stand for? Oh, this has got 16 thumbs up. I didn't realise. Hi, Art, again. I like you, Art. My Texan ranger. Um, what does SEO stand for? Winter's SEO. Um, SEO stands for Swindon Elite Ops. I am in Swindon. And there was a bunch of us uh, trying to put names on the internet for uh, handles for playing on Xbox and PlayStation and things like that. And uh, if you pick a name to play on the PlayStation or Xbox and you put on, I don't know, Matthew or Lawrence or Geeks, you then have to put 1929XYZ and it, you, you know, you know the internet names that you see everywhere. <coughs> so uh, one clever cucumber came up with the idea of just put the name that you want, leave a gap, put SEO in caps. No one will have that name and you know what? No one does. So if you guys out there want to become an SEO, you can. Um, you will probably see a few SEOs um, on PlayStations and Xboxes, particularly on Battlefield and Call of Duty and a few other games. There's a number of SEOs, Swindon Lee Ops, that are now in America and Australia and other places around the world. Um, back in the day when I used to play on the consoles, uh, a lot of people heard this idea and picked up on the idea of clans that we used to fight in and not fight in or fight with. Um, yeah, so that's where it comes from. A lot of my friends don't even know my real name because I used the name Winters SEO and they met me online and uh, called me Winters. Um, so I continue to be called Winters by some of them. And so when I was setting up this YouTube channel, just calling it Winters SEO just seemed natural. And basically my wife calls me Jamie and people at work call me Jamie um, and then all my friends call me Winters so I like being called Winters because it means that I'm not getting told off it means that uh, um, you're coming at me from a friendly point of view so um, I like I like Winters and I'm sticking with Winters and that's what SEO stands for um, T Bunts hi Tom if you had to start a Chaos Army, Demon or Marine, what faction would you choose? Zinch, Nova, Corn, or Slanesh, and why? Well, so you can't mix and match, it has to be one. I would never choose a Chaos Army. Demon or Marine. Don't want them, don't be interested, don't like Chaos. Don't like the fluff behind Chaos, they're the bad guys. And they must be stopped at all, all costs. Um, don't like what they did to the Emperor. I'm not particularly fond of playing against big beasty chaos mixed armies either. Um, chaos are the bad guys. Don't be one of the bad guys, be one of the good guys. There's way, way too many of the bad. Preacher quote there. If I had to, if you had a gun to my head and I had to pick a faction which was Zinch, Nova, Corner, Slanish. Um, well, Zinch is spells, Corner, Slanish is assault. Um, you don't have to go spells if you want to play Zinch, but it leans in that direction. Um, and Corn and Slanish are uh, Slanish's speed and the Salty Corn is tougher, a Salty, but less speed. And you to truly uh, use the advantages of those books or those marks, you would want to go that way. Nurgle is perhaps the only Chaos Army that you can you can pick what you want. You can go slightly a Salty, Nurgle, Bikers, Spawn. Um, or you can go a bit shooty, or can so I'd probably go Nurgle because they don't lean one way or the other. You can have an assaulty Nurgle army, a shooty Nurgle army, a magical Nurgle army, flying demon princes jinking with a two up biomancy, whipping the crap out of people. You can do that. Um, so Nurgle is and it's tough as hell, and the aesthetic to Nurgle. Um, beautiful bloated Nurgle armies like the Nurgle showcase on this channel which is yours t -Bunts. your armies are very pretty I like Nurgle Anton Kandul Kagonkin Magdalena Anton you're a legend thank you for doing the artwork which dawns a deployment zone videos 
all the time. You are a legend. Question, do you plan to expand, expand the Lord of the Thirteenth to have their own loyal guard legions? Um, the Lord of the Thirteenth is pretty expanded. <laughs> Um, I will share some more with you when I do the Penitent Forge and the 13th crossover. Um, I always imagined that the 13th had their own Loyal Guard legions. If you look on the Winters SEO YouTube page, the strap along the top has got some guard with white. Combat and virus suit, white. Um, and uh, back before I started the channel, I dipped my toe into Imperial Guard, painted those guys up, and always foresaw myself adding some more guards, say 50 or so infantry running around, and some tanks. I, I like the idea of Pask and his command squad of tanks. I like the idea of having a bunch of Layman Russ, say six of these wall rumbling forward. Camo pattern with a white turret. Camo pattern in the 13th, white helmets, white turret. Uh, and using that paint scheme of caramo and white in the guards. Uh, so I, I, I definitely foresee there being a whole auxiliary train of guardsmen behind the 13th, uh, supporting them up. The, the, the fluff behind the 13th is these, these guys who are, are renegades, who are looked down upon, who are hunted by the rest of the Imperium, um, almost automatically uh, suggest that there would be auxiliaries PDFs, uh, Renegade Guard units, also in the baggage train, also as part of the fleet base chapters, part of the fleet base force. Um, in real life, <laughs> in reality, which is not reality, but uh, in actuality, for every Space Marine, there must be 10 or 100 auxiliary troops, uh, guardsmen, who form part of the 13th. And what would their name be, these guardsmen? Um, they would call themselves the 13th too. The tanks would, have, would be called the 13th. There would be guard of the 13th. Daughters of the 13th. There would definitely be daughters of the 13th out there shooting people, killing people, uh, forming their own squads. Um, Anna Kerr 666 with GW now focusing a lot of their attention and bringing back some of their old school armies, e.g. Admech, Harlequins, Gene Steeler, Cult. Are there any factions out there that have not received a codex set yet that you would like to see? Well, Sisters of Battle Adapter Sororitas is coming, we can be certain of. They need an update. Um, I don't want to see the squats. Um, people talk about the uh, Demiurge and them maybe coming back. I think there was a reason why they were dropped and they were really, really unpopular. Uh, back in Rogue Trader days, back when I was much, much younger than I am, no one played them. Uh, the guy in the store never sold them. Um, what should they do? Uh, I would be super excited for, for GW to release a new Xenos faction. And there's an area of space to the east of McCrag, northeast of McCrag, which is a psychic null which High Fleet Beomoth is making their way around. And there is a, an empire in there, and I forget its name, and I want to reach for the book, but I'm not going to get it. It's in one of the Horus Heresy books, and also in one of the... It doesn't matter where it is. But there's an aerospace up there. You guys, if you know, please comment in the section below. But there's an aerospace northeast of McCrag, where there is a silica-based empire. We are carbon-based life forms, and there's a silica-based life form empire up there, which are doing very, very well against high fleet beer moth and surviving well. So I imagine these things are glass elementals, human-esque forms. Imagine a human being that looks like a cracked piece of glass from head to toe. And if you just touch the skin, you would cut on the skin. Their skin could be armor, but they could wear clothes. They could have ships because even though they're silica-based life forms, they, iron would still exist in the universe and metal would still exist in the universe, so they, they would still have uh, every opportunity to make spaceships. They wouldn't necessarily make them out of glass because it's not the best material, but their own bodies would be made um, out of glass. So I can see these glass chasers, these glass elementals, these um, uh, creatures, uh, you, and a whole other Xenos race that way. That, that would be very, very interesting exotic weaponry. You've got the Harad. The Harad are pretty uh, well formed. They're a, um, uh, cave dwelling species, a bit like the orc, which infect all of the known galaxy, and they use, they're supposed to be intelligent, 
I don't know if they have many vehicles, but they're supposed to use radiation weaponry. They're supposed to be immune to radiation, these slimy, half um, uh, like the Swamp Thing. <laughs> they look like the Swamp Thing, but they have radiation guns. Um, that's interesting. If they have spaceships and st stuff, or whether they're just vermin. I think the Harad started off as Space Skaven back in the road trader days. That's what they were imagined as being. Um, and then they changed into Harad in the way the squats changed into Demiurge in the way that uh, many of the story has evolved. The Harad could do it. Uh, they, they, they need to launch an, an, an alien Xenos race. Um, I can think of ways that they could do it. Uh, I think the Tau worked because of the manga S theme. They need to base it on something. They need to do it. Uh, they need an aesthetic which people see and go, ah, I want some of that. Mind you, I don't think Games Workshop have ever, ever struggled when it comes to aesthetics and um, art. So if they want to find an artistic fingerprint, an artistic, uh, uh, what am I trying to say? Just find the palette, find the what look you're going through, what vibe you're going for. Make awesome models. Uh, look, at, look at the Stormcast Eternals. Look at um, the uh, um, Age of Sigma stuff. Some of that stuff could easily, just as easily, been made for 40k and given them spaceships. So just pick on it an aesthetic. Um, let their artistic guys, art guys, go wild. Launch a new species and we will buy it. We will buy it by the truckload, like we did with Mechanicum and the Harlequins and the Soror Sororitas when they come out. Are there any factions out there that have not received a Perdix yet that you would like to see? Yes, more than the Harad, that glance-based species that I cannot remember for the life of me. Uh, question, uh, so now we're at S Forks. And uh, two thumbs up for this one. What's under the hat? Uh, under my hat are my Neospheric uh, connections, uh, which I, I keep them away from the um, um, unclean uh, uh, fibres and dust particles in the atmosphere. My Neospheric connections and uh, always oiled up so I can plug myself into the machine mind and uh, interface with my uh, god machine. That's what's under my hat, my mind link. Uh, do the best players win tournaments? Best players win tournaments. Do the best players. All depends on your definition of best. What do you mean by best player? If you mean the best player is in the best and greatest among us, heroes like there are no others, then the best players would be the most moral and just of us. <laughs> and I don't think they play 40k. <laughs> uh, I think they're uh, probably building huts in Zimbabwe or climbing mountains to discover new species, or working on spaceships and things like that, or, or working on Friday and Saturday nights, doing really shitty jobs cleaning streets, and working in late, long hours as hospital porters. These are the heroes that live amongst us. So uh, do the best players win tournaments. If you mean best as, as by best people, then no. Because these guys work hard and they can't play tournaments. Do the best players win tournaments? Look, tournaments. Tournaments is 75% list building. If you have a really, really, really good list, and assuming that you have some experience with 40k, uh, how to win tournaments? Play a lot of games. Play lots of games against lots of different armies with a very good list. Where do you get very good lists from? Go on the internet, <laughs> find some tournament lists, and play that list exclusively at least two or three times a week, every week for three months, for six months, against every single army you can get your hands on, and you'll do very well in tournaments. To actually win tournaments, it does take a certain amount of luck and it does take a certain amount of tactical genius it does well, maybe not tactical genius but it does take a, a thorough understanding of the game with a good list 
and tactics. A lot of games are won by make other people making mistakes or not understanding what certain units can do. So knowledge plays a big part in any game, I guess. Um, but do the best players win tournaments? I don't know. I want to say... Sure, why not? Um, <laughs> a few questions. Do you ever play fantasy? This is from Steve Stevenson, great name. Do you ever play fantasy? No. What's your official character in the 40k universe? Uh, I like... Can I say 30k universe? In the 40k universe, when I actually think of the 40k universe, the whole universe of 40k includes 30k, doesn't it? Warhammer 40k includes 30k. There is no Warhammer 30k game. There is... The Warhammer 40k rulebook and in it you can get different supplements and different codexes and different things and play the Horus Heresy battle reports and in there there's some of I've, all the guys that I've mentioned already look who is the official favorite character Forge World have been releasing lots of special dudes they released Kor Theron um, Garvio Loken <sighs> he's good Garvio Loken is good Cerberus um, but when they finally released the model for Nathaniel Garrow, um, I was super excited, like a four-year-old before Christmas. And as I wasn't that excited when they did it for Typhus, when they did it for Khan, when they did it for any of the other Primarchs. Uh, lots of different Primarchs out there, super excited to read the rules. Um, I was most excited to read the rules for Nathaniel Garrow and look at his model, and it looks pretty. Um, uh, Mike, who plays Cray Knights on this channel, has got the Nathaniel Garrell model. I bought it for him and gave it to him, saying, play this. Uh, so him, Garrow. Uh, what is your favourite, least favourite units in the game? Um, favourite unit in the game. Favourite unit in the game. My favourite unit in the Space Marine book. Favourite unit in the game. See, this is... A technical one, because you could say Imperial Knights are nice, they look really cool. Or well, what about the Warlord Titan? The Warlord Titan is a beast. Um, 2,500 or 3,000 points, basically 30 hull points worth of beast. Who wouldn't want a Warlord Titan? If someone turned up to your house for your Christmas or your birthday and said, here you go, here's a present, a fully painted Warlord Titan, you would marry them. Um, and you probably wouldn't do that if they gave you a shock attack gun. Um, so what's your favourite uh, unit? It's probably a Warlord Titan, but actually to play with. And then least favourite units. Least favourite units, you could say, I mean, again, the Wraith Knight is under-costed, but it's a beautiful looking model and it can be posed in many different ways. Um, favourite unit. In a normal game, Grab Centurions are probably my favourite unit because they do what they say on the tin and they fill in that hole in the Space Marine Codex, which didn't exist before, which is a higher toughness Space Marine. Before Grab Centurions, everything in the Space Marine Codex minus the artillery was toughness four. And suddenly you've got this toughness five stuff and a lot of grav. And they pump down range and they're very killy. And if you're not killing with the grav, then you've got the Hurricane Bolt, so anti-horde action. They're very good. Um, what's my least favourite unit in the game though? Probably Grab Centurions because they are ridiculous. I didn't get them for such a long time because they look stupid. Um, and they're Space Marines in Space Marines. A Space Marine in Power Armour, which is essentially a cyborg plugged in, it's cyborgish. Uh, in it, the way it functions, in the way it moves, in the way it acts. When, if you put a normal human, if or a space marine, if you even put a space marine inside a space marine armor without plugging it in, and he tried to move, he couldn't because the suit of armor would weigh half a ton or however much it weighs. He would move very, very slowly, very, very sluggishly. Plug it into the black carapace, and suddenly it moves with him, flows with him. If he wanted to get inside a bigger suit, why wouldn't he plug himself into a bigger suit? or a bigger suit, or a bigger suit, as indeed they do when it comes to Dreadnoughts or Titans or Imperial Knights, other uh, mind uplink units. Uh, why would a guy in a suit then climb inside another suit, which he has to drive and power and 
the fluff behind it and the look of them. Uh, someone, someone missed a meeting. Um, Steve Stevenson, another question. What's the best sandwich filling? Marmite. Um, I noticed that Spartan in the Ralph Walker. I noticed that Spartan in the background a while ago, which leads to you choosing Sons of Horus. And also, have you thought about making your own legion and count it as one of the two lost legions? No and no. The two lost legions originally existed so that uh, any players out there could make their own legions and stick them in the lore. Um, there have been rumours off and on again, and I don't know if this is just fanboy or nerd range, but there have been rumours off and on again that uh, Dan Abnett or Galthorpe or someone, hopefully Dan Abnett, have been given the green light from Black Library to write about the two legions. Oh man, I just hope after the Horus Heresy is done in about 10 years time, that someone does that. Someone writes that story, what happened to them. Yeah. Um, cool. Black Drillant Paul, how fearfully is your list going to be for this tournament on a scale of one to Skyhammer? That's a great question. How filthy on a scale of one to Skyhammer? I'm not bringing a Skyhammer, so I'm going to say one. And I don't have that filthy of mind. My mind is fairly filthy <laughs> when it comes to list building, but I lack that last 10, 20% that drives whack players. That's not very nice is it that drives tournament minded people that far to pick the most filthy dirtiest things that they could possibly do um, i always end up sprinkling in a bit of fluff or finding something that works and just cutting it again and look there's two lists that i've got in mind one is a vulcan drop pod list with lots of flamers and lots of melters which all become twin linked um, and the reason why, I, and no Skyhammer, <laughs> lots of drop pods, but no Skyhammer. And the reason for this is because the list does what you need it to, which is it either that the tanks die to the melter and the flamer kills everything else. And you can pop anywhere around the board. Um, and it's got a lot of objectives secured in it. That works, but there's no Skyhammer in it. See, I just trim that bit away because I find something that works and just cut it again and cut it again and cut it again. And that list has three command squads in it because <laughs> you can get more melter in uh, a command squad than you can in a pod with five stone guard in it. It's cheaper. And then the other list is a white scars grab list. Um, but I'm leaning towards the pod melter list. Uh, so on a scale of one to Skyhammer, it's going to be one, but it is cheesy. And when I finally settle upon something, I'll show you guys. Um, Geeks 40k channel. Have fun at no retreat, mate. We did. Thank you, Richard. Um, Gaming. How big is your hat collection? I have two. I have my winter hat and my summer hat. This is my winter hat. Uh, Alex Doe, get a glaive. Okay. Steve Oysa, question. If you were funded by the community, what direction would you go in? More Titans, more armies, more shows, different gaming systems, or a box set? Reviews, upcoming epic springs to mind. If you were funded by the community. If I was funded by the community, I would immediately get a painted orc army because I don't have enough time to get a second army and paint it up, or a fifth army and paint it up. Um, I would suddenly have an army, or I could... If I couldn't find one on eBay, I could buy it and then send it away to someone to paint it, come back, and you would immediately, if I was funded by the uh, community, you would see what battle reports. Next, you would see uh, Death Corps of Krieg battle reports, the Death Corps of Krieg guard battle reports. Death Corps look cool. Um, I would blur in some of the 13th narrative there and probably give them white face masks <laughs> and make them affiliated with the 13th somehow. Because guard and tanks love guard and tanks and orcs don't. That's what would happen if I was funded by the community. Um, now, if I was, I, I t and you mentioned the upcoming epic, there is rumours that um, Forge World are going to release epic again, and the, uh, so this is um, Titans battling each other on the tabletop. 
shrunk down so you can play with five or six or seven different titans. So for example, the Warlord Titan will look about the size of an Imperial Knight. And then you'll have a Reaver, then you'll have a um, Warhounds. And I don't want them to go full epic with lots of little tanks and lots of little men running around. I believe when it stayed as uh, Adeptus Titanicus, I believe when it stayed at a big scale, it was a better game. I had Adeptus Titanicus in its first iteration with all the cardboard buildings. And it came with one Titan and you had to buy more Titans. I remember playing that game and it was jolly good fun. Um, and then they went full epic and you should never go full epic. Uh, it's, it took a bit away from it, I think. So, I'm super excited with the idea that Forge World are going to go back to Adeptus Mechanicus and I would love to get a bunch of Titans, a bunch of Warlords. Imagine four, five, six, ten Warlords painted up in the colours of the Penitent Forge crashing through terrain and taking on bad guys. Super epic, super excited and I don't have the time. So if I was funded by the community, I would buy 20 um, versions of Titans, uh, Reavers, Warlords, and uh, uh, Warhound Titans. I would also need lots of new terrain at the right scale instead of buildings this big, buildings, and paint it and stick it together. I, I, I would love to get the new epic stuff. It would take an amount of time, which I don't have, to... to put them together to paint them. It would take an amount of time that I don't have to put the scenery together and paint it. And it would take an amount of time, it's time that I don't have. So if I was funded by the community, there would be epic games using Titans on the channel. There would be Orcs on the channel. There would be um, Death Corps of Krieg on the channel. If I could live the dream, which is never gonna happen, but if I could live the dream and this was my job, say I won the lottery and then I could do this day in, day out and just do 40k, um, then I would review every everything that comes out, every book that comes out, I'd review. Review videos are quite easy to do. Um, uh, I don't like review videos where people just put a book down and start reading it and flicking through and going, oh, look at this, oh, look at this, oh, look at this. I've done a couple of review videos. And Rob, who did one on the Solar Auxilia recently, he did it the same way, which is you read it and you read it and you read it and you understand the book first. So when I did the Death from the Skies one, for example, I did it about five or six days later after it came out because I'd read it about five or six times over. And then I did a Death from the Skies review. The same with the Mechanicum one, the same with the Space Marine one. Um, I make sure I understand the book fully. If I'm giving you guys a review, I don't want it to be a page when i watch reviews i don't want it to be a page by page let's discover this together sort of thing i want it to be a review and thoughts considered thoughts of someone who understands the material they're looking at so that's what i would do i buy every single book codex and rules book that is and disseminate them and deliver them to you i would get more if i did this as a living living or if i won the lottery there would be much more variety on the channel and there would be campaigns, there would be campaigns. I'll tell you the thing I really, really love to do. Again, time, no option, money, no option. This is what Mini Wargaming needs to do because they're the biggest studio out there and the only ones that can and no one's done it yet. Someone needs to do the Horus Heresy from beginning to end. Someone needs to do Isthmus 3, the betrayal where the sons of Horus and the Death Guard and the Emperor's children dropped all the loyalists down on the planet and then a virus bombed them and then came in to wipe them out. The book exists, it's called Betrayal, book one of the Horus Heresy. Build those battles, get those armies, paint them up, do the Betrayal, Ispen three, then, and that's six fights, and then do um, Ispen five, the drop site massacre and then do uh, the Moloch campaign, and then do um, Prospero, uh, the Space Wolves versus the Thousand Suns, then do Kalf and the Ultramarines. Someone out there could make a series of Horus Heresy videos with bespoke tables and all the correct armies and all the correct miniatures, and it would be about a hundred shows long following 
the uh, four, four to our books through, following the Horus Heresy book through from beginning to up to where they are now. Um, that's what I would do if I won the lottery and could do this full time. Um, I would make, buy bespoke terrain and play the Horus Heresy through. And sometimes the good guys would win, and sometimes the bad guys would win. That would be awesome, and it would look, yeah, just had a bit of a, a nerdgasm there. Uh, but rewind back to reality. Um, if I was funded by the community, if I had more time, and at the moment I don't have any more time, um, if I could buy time from somewhere, or someone just gave me an orc army, I'd start playing with that, and then Krieg and then reviews, and then um, uh, campaigns. <sighs> Chan Green, will you ever do Warhammer video game Let's Play videos? No, don't know what you're talking about. Oh, those are the ones with the things and the things, no. I don't think so. Um, Chris Hill, what do you do in real life with a job? How does the hobby fit around it? In real life with a job, I work for the man in a factory. I work shifts, I work days and nights and all over the place. Um, and how does my hobby fit around it? Well, working for the man is tough. Then I'm married, so I work for her as well. <laughs> how does it fit around it badly? She's downstairs watching Grey's Anatomy right now, and I'm up here doing this. And I played yesterday, and I'm playing tomorrow. <laughs> so it fits very badly around it. Um, what Xenos Army would you like to do, says Epiphany62. Orcs talked about that. Phil James, evening. I have often wondered how much footage you accumulate whilst filming a game and how long it takes you to edit down to the vinyl video. Great channel, thank you. Um, how much footage? Anywhere from 5 to 25% of footage gets discarded during the editing process. How long does it take to edit down to a vinyl video? Um, I've thought about this and timed it, actually. As a general rule of thumb, obviously this changes, but as a general rule of thumb, every 10 minutes takes an hour. So if a video is 30 minutes long, that's three hours of my life. If a video is 15 minutes long, that's an hour and a half. If a video is 50 minutes long, that's five hours. That's once it's filmed, that's uploading it on the PC and then putting it all together um, and trimming the bits off of each cut, um, fading and fading out where I need to, adding music. Um, adding any tags, all that sort of stuff. About an hour per 10 minutes. So for every video that you watch, which is 30 minutes long, that's three hours of my time. If it's 50 minutes, it's five hours of my time. Also an entirely optional question, Donald Trump discuss. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, um, I've been talking for a very long time now, and there are people out there who've spoken much more eloquently about Donald Trump than I. And uh, there's lots of things on, on YouTube <laughs> which can amuse you if you want to see. Look, Donald Trump. Uh, Brexit. The rise of the right across the world. Mary Le Pen in France. A Drogon in Turkey. The rise of nationalism. The pendulum is swinging, isn't it? Um, it's democracy. People put in there. Uh, if we lived in a perfectly sane, normal world where everything was good and there was no war <laughs> and everyone played 40k and got on with each other and it didn't matter where you came from or what job you did or what army you collected, or whether you played Eldar or Tau, people still spoke to you, regardless of playing Eldar or Tau, then there'd probably be no Donald Trump. Um, he, things like this are symptoms of what kind of society we are. We get the leaders we deserve, someone once said. I forget who quoted that. We get the leaders we deserve. I'm not going to talk about Donald Trump. There's far too many people of his who can speak about it better than I. It's good fun though, isn't it? Don't take it too seriously. It's only life and death. I-D-I-C-Beer, a legend of the internet, Mr. Beer. 
good stuff fella what is it that made you stop playing tournaments um youtube <laughs> this channel i have no time um andreas clem i i r c you are contemplating on adding another titan to your collection with sonic weaponry are you still i cannot recall saying such a thing but if you can recall me saying such a thing good on you um i would love to add a wall or titan to my collection but they don't have sonic weaponry um, am I contemplating on adding another Titan to my collection? The Reaver took about a month to uh, assemble and paint. So you get this big box and three quarters of the resin in the big box goes in the bin and cutting and sharpening and filing all around the resin this creature emerges in 300 pieces and it's called a Reaver Titan and you need to stick it together and pin it and then paint it after scrubbing it and cleaning it, it took about a month. A wall or titan would take, I imagine, at least two months. And I don't have two months. <laughs> so I'm not getting another titan. I don't have two minutes. Um, Rascally99, building a fluff army, Deathwing, whilst I'm aware of the very low likelihood of success in battle, have you any tips? Yes, go on the internet. Uh, Google best Deathwing army and copy it. Um, yeah. Absol Absolver. Love both your Abnak armies, very well painted. Okay, thank you. Michael O'Holloran, a question for you. If you could change one rule in 40k, what would you change? Personally, I'd like to change the ignores cover rule, something a bit less cut and dried. Perhaps a reduction to the target's cover save rather than negating it completely. Great channel. Well, there are rumours that there is a new edition coming very shortly, um, probably next year, and everything's going to change anyway. <laughs> regardless of what rules I want to change or not. I hear from Bowles that it's going to be somewhere between Age of Sigma and where we are now. Um, so it should be a vast trimming down. So let's just think about trimming stuff down. You should be able to assault from vehicles. It's one of the most oft forgotten rules. People get blown out in the previous turn and then, and then they run in and I see it on battle reports and I've seen it on my battle reports. You should be able to assault from vehicle. Assault vehicles. What's that? If you assault from a non-assault vehicle, your opponent would get to fire full overwatch at you at normal ballistic skill. You're piling out of a Humvee and attacking the Taliban or whatever. You, you can assault, but they get to fire at you because you're coming out of a Humvee. But if you're coming out of an APC and the front rank comes down and you, and then they're just snap firing because they're probably going to be dug in. <clears throat> And drop pods, so you come out of drop pod, you should be able to sort, but they'll get to, you know, full ballistic skill. That's one of the rules. I think you should be able to assault from reserves, particularly from your board edge. If there's an opponent here and your army's coming there, then you should be able to assault. Maybe not from the sides, there was a lot of shenanigans going on without flanking White Scar's armies. But if you're here, you should be able to assault from your board edge. These are little things that I would trim down and change. Um, I know Matthew from Mini Wargaming did a big speech about toughness values and hull points for vehicles and he thinks that the vehicle hull point wound system and the toughness values for monstrous creatures should somehow be merged so that vehicles get a toughness value or not. Um, there's a big debate, uh, the scribe and others and the long war have debated um, toughness values for vehicles. I think that may or may not be coming, don't know. Do we need it? Uh, maybe. I don't know. I don't think that's a problem. It uh, doesn't seem to, to jar as much as other things. Um, one of the things I'd like to see is in the main rulebook you have Eternal War missions and you have Maelstrom missions and there should be Tournament missions. And other types. You could shoot, you have Eternal War missions, Maelstrom missions, Fluffy Bunny Killer missions tournament missions in the main rule book and and you go to the tournament missions page and there's one to six different types of tournament missions and it talks about force all you can bring this no allies and that and that or whatever and there they are and i think that would help the community a great deal it would certainly help the throne of skulls up in nottingham because then they can play the tournament missions i think a lot of independent people will just follow the tournament missions in the book and it doesn't overall and stop people playing Maelstrom missions and uh, Eternal Warship missions as and when they would choose. That's more than one thing I would change. 
but I definitely think there should be tournament missions in the main book. I've run out of questions, and I've gone on for over an hour, I think, looking at the clock. And she called me at least once. I'm in trouble. So honestly, I really have to go. If you like this sort of thing, and you want to hear more of this sort of thing, then let me know. Um, I don't plan to do another one of these anytime soon. I might do one in the next three to six months, if you guys are really, really keen on it. I might do one in a year's time. This might be a yearly thing. I might do one of these if I've got some updates coming in. I'd love to hear your feedback and thoughts and suggestions on some of the things that I've just spilled out of my brain. I can barely remember half the things I said. I'm sure I've insulted a few people out there. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, that's it. Um, thanks for watching and happy wargaming.